Good afternoon, everyone. We are presently viewed on different social media platforms. You can see us live in Zoom and at our official Facebook page, PaisI21. We also have a delayed telecast at our YouTube channel, Infomi. I am Mr. Rusea Brian de Casella. Welcome to the fifth virtual gathering sponsored by the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated or PAIS I-21 and the Pinoy Educators Advocating Social Media Education Incorporated or PISME. One of the trending calls in Twitter a few days ago was on the pushing for the academic freeze. Due to the many struggles our students are experiencing in the opening of the new academic year. Obviously, we have nothing to do now but to embrace, especially with the new trends or new uh, modes in the delivery of instruction or learning. To answer one of the problems we have in the opening of the new academic year, our organization decided to come up with this virtual conference entitled Developing Online Instructional Materials in the Era of Remote Teaching and Learning. This conference is designed for all educators in public and private elementary, secondary, and higher educational institutions. I am happy to see that we have a great number of confirmed participants from different parts of the country. We have in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So to formally start our webinar, may I request everyone to be in silence for the prayer. Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we thank you for the blessings in providing us continuous guidance in the conduct of the many webinars we have. We thank you for the presence of every participant we have. May you guide our speaker so that he would be able to effectively impart his God-given wisdom to all of us. May he be blessed as he continues to share his expertise to everyone who needs them. Protect our nation, O Lord, from all the forms of threats. May the cases of COVID will continue to diminish. Protect our frontliners and educators that we may be able to defeat this pandemic. Keep all of us safe, O Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I formally introduce to you our speaker, I would like everyone listening to the different platforms we have to raise your question or have it posted after our speaker's presentation. You can also use the chat function from time to time if you would like to provide us your own insights about Sir Salsag's presentation. We will be having the open forum or the question and answer portion after the speaker's presentation. For our listeners here in Zoom, you may use the chat functions to share your thoughts or questions in writing. We will be notifying you ahead if you are recognized. Thank you. It is now time for me to formally introduce to you our resource speaker. Our resource speaker is a certified Apple teacher, an advocate of e-learning, literacy, teacher education, student affairs program development, and curriculum development. He is a published researcher and national trainer with interest on learner-structured instruction and has continually trained teachers and education leaders from preschool and tertiary levels. Just recently, he published two professional education textbooks on technology for teaching and learning and the teacher and the community, school culture and organizational leadership. He was born in Bacolod City on April 20, 1996. He has a Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English, and currently working on his master's degree at the De La Salle University in Manila. Moreover, he's a licensed professional teacher and a member of the League of Catechists and Religious Educators of the Philippines at the Ateneo de Manila University. Having served the academe for almost five years and in various capacities, namely primary, intermediate, and as a tertiary teacher. At present, he is connected with Colegio San Agustin Bacolod as a senior high school teacher and college instructor. Aside from being a full-time teacher, he is also a professional lecturer in the licensure examination for teachers in various review centers and universities in Bacolod City, Metro Manila, Quezon Province, Iloilo Province, Domaguete City, and Zamboanga del Norte for the subjects curriculum development, 
educational technology, teaching profession, social dimensions of education, and facilitating learning. He is currently the educational consultant of all the schools of the Oblates of the Notre Dame Sisters all over the Philippines, Mater Carmeli Academy, and Elical Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Paul, Raymark, and Salsa. Hey, Sir Paul, good afternoon. Thank you for that generous introduction. Nice to see you again, sir. So, good afternoon to our viewers in various platforms. Thank you very much to the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators for this opportunity again to share with you some insights on the usage of the digital learning materials. I'm very glad to be with you this afternoon. But before that, allow me to share my screen. Okay. Oh, there. So. Okay. So I'm. I'm. Uh, I hope that all of you is well. All of you are okay. Uh, here in Bacolod City, where I am currently residing, is that uh, we are in M MSTQ, the Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine. Hence, um, we are not allowed to go out. So we are all here staying at home because of this. So all are working from home. I hope that everything is fine, everything is well. So also for the teachers who are listening, I hope that you will be gaining some insights for this afternoon's webinar. So we will be talking about teaching with technology, how to develop online instructional materials in the era of remote teaching and learning. Everything is new. That's why we have the concept of no normal because everything is new. That everything uh, is something that is not familiar to each one of us and that we need to strive harder more in order for us to still uh, uh, to still deliver quality education with our clientele, with our students. These are the outline for my webinar this afternoon. So we will be talking about getting ready to teach with technology. What are the preliminaries in teaching technology? What are the things that we need to consider first in teaching with technology? And after that, I will be walking you through with the universal design for learning. So we will be talking about how we will apply the universal design for learning with the principles of technology. So of course, no, from the very beginning, we need to think about as teachers that each of our gestures and each of our behaviors in school or inside a classroom needs to be guided with principles and theories, not only that, Anything that pops up into your mind is something that you need to, you will implement in the classroom. All of these needs to be guided with principles. And after that, uh, the last part will be something which is very practical. I will be sharing with you online tools and practical tips in using technology in remote teaching and learning. So don't worry, everything is practical. Everything are just steps only guided by the theories. Of course, we need to anchor each of our suggestions with sound theoretical basis. So uh, these are the three things that we will be talking about this afternoon. I hope you will be learning with something. Just sit back, relax, and then you will enjoy. I hope so. I could entertain you somehow. Uh, of course, no. Uh, uh, attending webinars is something that is very uh, time-consuming or something that would bore you. But Let's try to bear this in mind that we don't have any choice now. We don't have any mean, we don't have any means now of submitting ourselves in professional development. It's only through these webinars that we will be attending with uh, in order for us to submit ourselves with professional development and we can no longer find any means for now in a sense that everything is volatile, everything is uncertain, the least that we can do or the safest mode that we can do is to conduct webinars. Like for example, we cannot hold uh, public gatherings. Only for example, churches can only cater 10% of the total seating capacity. So in order for us to reach many teachers, we are having this webinar for our professional development. Professional development is very important in times of crisis, in times of pandemic, most especially for us teachers, simply because that everything is new and we, are, we do not practice this 
from even before that every that we study every now and then in order for us to embrace this new normal that there are a lot of things that we need to learn that there are a lot of applications that i need to be aware to be familiar with so everything is a constant learning no that's why of course if we try to go back to the adage that once a teacher forever a student yan nga sabi ko kanina kagabi sabi ko napakahirap kapag may invitation ng webinar kailangan mo talagang you need to exhaust yourself again of of course we need to try of giving something which is novel which is new not only things that they have heard already kasi if you try to take a look in the world of social media now ang daming mga webinars no there are webinars here and there but the moment that you will be giving out of something you need to think about, oh, baka narinig na nila ito sa kabilang webinar, narinig na nila ito, anything else. We need to try to think about and trying to give you something which is new, of course, no? uh, some uh, ideas that would be new in your ears. The coronavirus, of course, has changed how millions around the world are educated. It greatly changed how millions around the world are educated. It's not only all about how we are educated that has changed, but also in terms of the clients, in terms also of the market of the schools. Uh, yesterday, I think it's the banner of the Philippine Star. I'm reading Philippine Star every morning. Uh, the banner is that many private schools opted not to open because of this pandemic. It's opted not to open because of this pandemic. The market is very competitive now simply because, for example, if you are coming from Iloilo, you can enroll in Lasal because of the online teaching and remote teaching and learning that you need not to be present physically in that school even for registration. Like, for example, at Ateneo, they forgo already their, grad, uh, their college entrance test, the asset. They already forgo that asset, that there will be no asset for this academic year in Ateneo, as well as with uh, DLSU. So uh, the market is very challenging also in a sense that you can submit yourself in any schools, even if you will try to submit in Harvard, if you try to submit in any other schools, you can do it. As well as uh, one thing that I like is that the moment that you submit yourselves to other schools from other places, you are gaining some new insights and also some cultures that you will be learning and best practices that they are doing. It's something that is very important for us teachers in order for us to widen our horizons. That you are not simply there sitting down and then being contented of what you can do. That's why you submit to professional developments also as teachers because you want to listen to something new. You want to listen to some best practices that uh, he or she might be doing and then it's applicable in your end. So, no solutions for education could bring much needed innovation. I walked you through last time with my webinar here with uh, PICE 21, innovation, which is very important for us teachers, that in times of pandemic, we need to innovate. What are the things that needs to be innovated? For example, there are many things that I'm doing before that I can't do now. So, you try to focus much more on innovation. How can I innovate that at the same time, I need, I was not able to forget those practices that what I am doing before. In the Forbes.com article, last April 13, 2020, online teaching will no longer simply be an option. It's no longer an option. Next year, institutions that are unable to offer a blended technology that seamlessly integrates face-to-face -face and online teaching will increasingly find themselves left behind until they are simply out of the race. So if you did not uh, if you did not transition yourselves with if you did not transition yourselves with uh, the blended technology, if you did not transition yourselves with the blended technology, you can uh, you might be left behind or you might be out of the race. So these are some uh, reminders for us teachers that we need to transition ourselves and we need to learn this new modality in teaching. I'm gonna, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's why there are some teachers or there are some scholars that this is not the last pandemic that we will be facing, that there will be more pandemic that we will be facing.
So that's why you need to establish a COVID proof or not a COVID proof, a disruptive proof education in order for you to continue. In order for you to continue in delivering quality instruction. Like for example, if you try to insist on systems that would still promote face-to-face -face interaction in your respective schools, and you did not uh, transition yourselves in full online, for example, in, or in full remote uh, systems and processes in school, like for example, in our case, we are in MECQ. If you did not try to think about systems and processes on how not to be disrupted, and then you can still continue delivering your work even though you are work in a work from home basis. So it would be easy for you that there would be no anxiety in, in your end. But there are schools that the teachers are still reporting in school, which is uh, personally, on a personal note, I am not promoting simply because that you do not know where these people came from. That even though, of course, no, they are homeschool, homeschool dynamics, but you do not know what happened along the way in the travel from home to school. You do not know what happened along the way. So uh, that is one thing that you need to think about as teachers, that there are a lot of things that we need to think about. We are in an era of distance education. The teachers and students are in different place for all or most of the time that they teach and train and learning. So we are in the era of distance education and we need to transition ourselves with remote instruction. So I would like to ask a question before we continue. How do you feel now teaching in a distance learning mode or what is learning in a distance education era? You can try to comment your answers in Facebook or in the chat room here in Zoom. Kindly comment if you do have. So let's, I uh, will be checking also here on my end. If, uh, how, sorry, my PowerPoint, uh, my presentation is moving. Okay, so what is learning for you in the distance education? You may give a phrase maybe. They're thinking Pasigogo of what to answer. <laughs> Okay, I will go back with your answers maybe later if you have some of how do you define learning now? Of how do you define learning now in the era of remote teaching and learning? We have friends from the Division of Copies here, all the way from Albay also. How do you define learning? Okay, we have here in the Zoom chat. A challenge to learner and to the teacher. Okay, good. Thank you, Ms. Pearl, because it's uh, both a challenge, not only to the teachers, but as well as to the learner. Uh, Ms. Mary Jane answered here in Zoom that learning now is a lifelong process. It's a lifelong process. Good. That is no longer what is all about content, but it's more of a lifelong process. Thank you for those answers. So we are now in the era of remote instruction. And in that note, in that note, we need to think about distance learning. We transition ourselves with distance learning simply because that there is this concept of separation of teacher and students in place and in time or 
both. That we are here because of the separation, the concept of separation of teacher and students. But then again, the overaching approach, the overaching approach is flexible learning. That we give learners choice in medium. That's why if you are into print, if you are into video, or if you are into online. But each of the medium that we will be using do have advantages and disadvantages. Like for example, if most of your students are into print learning modules, for example, it would be very costly naman in terms of reproduction. It would be very costly in terms of reproduction if you are into uh, printed learning modules. On the other hand, you need to think about also the path, the courses that the students will be taking, if it will be burdensome to them or not, as well as the place of study, if they will be studying at home or in the workplace, as well as the support. So if there are tutors on their end, if there are caregivers that will be attending to them, as well as the audio conference and the helplines that you will be giving, as well as the methods of assessment, the entry or the exit points. So the overaching approach that we are having now is flexible learning. But most of the challenge for us teachers is that, or most of the complaints of teachers now is that it might be too much of flexibility that we forget already quality that we try to insist up to this time that we need to deliver quality education and most of the teachers most especially seasoned teachers doesn't like of too much of flexibility they doesn't like of too much of flexibility because for them it's not quality the moment for example that you give deadlines and then the moment that you give deadlines and the students did not pass, some of the seasoned teachers will tell me or would tell, would tell the dean, for example, or their respective principals that uh, it might be too much of the deadline. It would always be a reason of the students of no internet connection, power interruption, naglag yung cellphone, or ganito, ganyan. So uh, it's one thing that would be very challenging that we tend to think about still our practices before that might not be applicable now. That it might not be applicable now. So flexibility is something or an approach that we need to embrace starting from now. That let us try to think about that we are no longer in 100% control. That we can't be in control now in the era of distance learning and flexible learning. That's why we need to repurpose also the number of subjects, the book of activities that we are giving to our students, or it might be you will no longer be giving activities. So it's a game in terms of teacher's decision. If you try to, if you try to consider lang always yung gusto ng bata or gusto ng parents, or if you will try to consider naman yung role ni teacher in delivering quality education or you will be meeting halfway or if you will be meeting halfway and try to explain to the parents or to the clients that we are doing this and that because of these things and please we need to understand each other at this time so many things to consider but also our teachers do have a lot of questions am i ready with that that we have teachers, for example, na we are already on the third week of our classes for college and maybe second week for our basic education in the school where I am connected. Many teachers still would tell me, am I ready? Or there are many teachers still who was not able to embrace the learning management systems that we are having. How can I do it? Or maybe policies are not yet laid in well. There were not uh, being cleared well to the academic faculty. So many things to consider that we are in an era of trial and error, but I hope that it will not be trial and error up to the end. One thing in order for us to begin, in order for us to be ready, is to try to think about the shift, that we need to make a shift. Let us accept the reality that there are many things that we can no longer do now. 
Many things that we can no longer do now. What are the practices that you are doing before that you can't do it now? Because uh, it would be a very, it would be a hard thing for leaders, for educational leaders, instructional leaders in schools or in educational institutions that many of the seasoned teachers, for example, are complaining na, Miss, bakit ganito, no? I cannot teach well now. I cannot teach well now. You cannot teach well now or they cannot teach well now simply because that their mindset are still of the face-to-face -face instruction, that their mindset are of still for the face-to-face -face instruction and not of the distance learning already. Kasi merong mga narinig kong teachers na sabi nila ng learning management system na yan, walang kwenta yan. Kasi uh, it's just a mere repository of, ano daw, of materials. But that is now, the learning management system is for distance learning. And yung approach na ginagamit mo is no longer applicable to the remote teaching and learning. And you try to insist still, distance educate, you try still to insist your practices in the face-to-face -face instruction, which is no longer applicable now. That's why we need to begin in changing our mindset in accordance with the theory of Carol Dweck, the mindset theory. If you are into fixed mindset or if you are already into growth mindset, if you are a fixed mindset teacher, you ignore feedback. Pero siyempre, lahat, ang dami, siguro, no? Kaya, both in public and private schools, ha? Hindi lang na baka sa, sasabihin nyo, para lang yan sa public school, yung mga daming ignore, uh, ignore ng feedback. No! It's both all now. Both public and private educational institutions that many ignores feedback. Meron nga akong school na I am the educational consultant and then the administrator told me, ah, uh, uh, nagbibigay na ako ngayon ng memo, sabi niya, sabi niya sa akin. Sir, I'm already giving memos to my teachers because too much compassion, too much mercy. Uh, no, uh, there are a lot of things that are, many things are being ignored or ang dami daw mga bagay na hindi nila ginagawa if too much mercy and too much compassion. So, that's the fixed, fixed mindset type of teacher. As well as, there are a lot still who doesn't want to try. Uh, for example, that he or she would still insist of things that they are doing before, which is no longer applicable now, but it doesn't to try. And sometimes, parang ginagawa na lang mas yung anxious ako, baka hindi na ako in, uh, I, I am just uh, keeping my sanity, no? I'm just keeping my sanity. Sometimes it's all about us, all about us, that we do not want to try. Why, do not, why we do not want to try? Because we're afraid of failure. What is success without failure? All successful people have gone failure, as well as easily give up, that we easily give up of things that we are doing. Avoid challenges, doesn't want of challenges. But in this new normal, I'm telling you, many challenges ahead. Poor internet connection. Nagdi-disconnect ako palagi. Or for example, yung laptop ko nagahang. Kailangan ko ng ganito, kailangan ko ng ganyan. But let's try to change our mindset in being a growth mindset teacher. That we learn from failure. That failure is not something that is constant or permanent. That failure is something that we need to learn about. And that is a teachable moment. And you put in effort. Kasi minsan, uh, not all na, some, not all teachers, minsan, they are, are already into the minimal. Na ito lang yung magagawa ko. Bakit pipilitin mo pa nga ako? As well as, we need to keep going. No matter how difficult it is, we need to keep going. Yung nga sabi nila, it's not about the storm that you have to go through. It's more of how did you become after the storm? Try to think about the positive side of this pandemic, of this emergency teaching and learning. How did you become after the pandemic that you know now how to use the learning management system? You know now how to use technology in the classroom. Embraces challenges and very important that we learn from feedback, that we are a community of learning to each other. 
who learn and who learns from each other. That it's going to be okay very much soon. That it's going to be okay very much soon. But not now, not later, not in the months to come, but maybe in the years to come that we will be having in the new normal. Allow me to begin with the very first thing that we will be talking about. Three things this afternoon. Number one, getting ready to teach with technology. Don't worry, we will be until 6 p.m. this afternoon. Joke lang. <laughs> Let's begin with getting ready to teach with technology. Again, transformation framework. Reminder from Microsoft. I'm also a Microsoft Innovative Educator. I just got my certificate last time. So, yan yung product sometimes ng pandemic no? or ng work from home that you gain many certifications. But I'm enrolling myself in these certifications in order for me to have professional development. Kasi yun nga sabi ko kanina, napakahirap kapag mabigay ka ng webinar. So, of course, so I'm giving webinars every now and then. And then sabi ko, may bago pa kaya akong maibibigay o baka puro ba, uh, luma na or paulit-ulit na lang. But this is a reminder for all of us that in our quest of transforming education, the picture of education, we need to think about that it's not only all about LMS. That LMS will not the thing that will survive or LMS is not your game changer. That there are a lot still of aspects that you need to think about. You have your LMS, but is there student success? You have your LMS, but is there a secure and connected campus? You have your LMS, but is there academic research? So it's not only all about teaching and learning. We need to be holistic in terms of our approach in our quest for the digital transformation of our education. Let's try to think about readiness in terms of our respective institutions of our respective schools. Have we established a centralized e-learning support unit that there is an e-learning support every now and then, both for the teachers and for our students? In the school where I am connected, each of the colleges, in the school where I am connected, each of the colleges do have an educational technology coordinator that they act and they serve as an e-learning support both for the teachers and for the students. I hope it is also being doing also in your respective institutions. Second is that there is a unified guidelines. This is one thing that is very important for me, that it must have a unified guidelines in terms of the continuity plan for teaching and learning. And the guidelines need to be done or need to be in a written format that would target all facets of educational leadership or of school management. That's not only about teaching and learning, not only all about school policies, but all facets of school management over school operation. Do we have guidelines in terms of attendance of the students? What will happen if they every now and then not attending your class? Do we have guidelines in terms of a teachers who is not attending their own classes or how did you, how can you monitor teachers uh, conducting his or her classes? How can you monitor? Do you have a monitoring system about that? So that's one thing. For example, how can you monitor the quality of resources that they are uploading? Kasi baka yung resources na ina-upload, puro lang YouTube video. Or baka yung resources na ina-upload ng teachers ay puro lang, ano, puro lang link or baka wala na talagang ina-upload sa LMS or nag-quiz na lang. So, that's one thing that you need to think about. That we need to have guidelines in order for us not to be uniform. Because if we are not uniform, it will lead you to toxicity. Uh, it will lead you to an environment that is toxic. Kasi makikita mo, it will lead you to a toxic environment simply because that, ala, bakit iba yung ginagawa niya? Iba din yung sa akin. Ano ba talaga yung tama? That's one thing, no? As well as virtual office addresses. How the students will reach you. How will the students reach you? That's one thing. So that's why this is the time for school leadership that a school survival will greatly depend on its leadership. So how will your leader how will your coordinator, how will your principal will lead you in times of crisis? From the Harvard podcast that I have listened to last time, 
uh, there must a framework for everything. That there must have a framework for everything. That's the one thing that the leader need to have. Where will this pandemic will lead you? And then the leader need not to forego the top down decision making. And the leader need to think about what are the practices that my teachers are doing. What is applicable? What are good practices that need to be promoted? As well as the leader need to focus on the professional development of teachers. That in this pandemic, professional development need to be constant. That's why, uh, for example, in the Department of Education, they continue their lack sessions, their learning action and sessions because of the focus on professional development. Because this is a new norm, we need to think about many things. No, We need to evaluate many things. As well as build networks and collaboration and share best practices. That's why uh, being a school leader, you are thinking about a lot of facets of school management, a lot of aspects in school management that uh, you are not only in office, you are not only in office, you need to cater many things. That's why, okay na ako sa, okay na ako sa ganitong bagay, okay na ako magbigay ng webinar. Okay, next, let's talk about teacher readiness. This is very important also. Oh, you try to think about yourselves. Teachers knowledge to design lessons fit for fully online environment. Yung nga sabi ko, I started with mindset. Yung lesson na dinidesign mo, hindi pang fully online, pang face-to-face. -face. Do you, do your teachers or do we have already skills in producing and deploying digital content for online delivery? hands-on skills or lab type of courses, remote virtual support for faculty, or also do we know how to make on-demand live and recorded tutorials? So this is our variation for in teacher readiness. For the students, on the other hand, do we have continuity plan for teaching and learning, contextual for academic level? One of the, our misconceptions, one of our misconceptions is that we do have a one-size fits all approach still, most of the educational institutions that we do have. Yung sabi ko, we cannot make or we cannot make one or hindi natin pwedeng pag-isahin yung college and yung basic education. Because, syempre, developmentally appropriate dapat yung ating approaches. As well as institutional online guide for students, remote virtual support or help desk for our students. Because lack of support would lead these students into feeling of anxiety feeling of anxiety. So, hence, technology opens up new possibilities for learning activities. Only that we need to think about that way. That there are a lot of advantages that this technology will help us. That there are a lot of, techno that there are a lot of advantages that this technology will bring us. That technology can help facilitate participation. So, technology makes it easier to share content in different formats. It may be video. It may be audio. It may be a podcast. I will be sharing some of the tools later. I will be sharing some of the tools later. Many tools later. So technology also makes it possible to flip your classroom or engage your students in content creation. Like for example, you make your asynchronous activities stand still or you make uh, self-sufficient asynchronous activities and then during your synchronous session, you will no longer deal more with the content. You will no longer deal more with the content. As well as technology extends typical assessment strategies that you assess now, not more of uh, multiple choice, not more of matching type, but you are more of into authentic assessment strategies now. And also technology still can support more authentic assessment strategies now. So let's try to think about this thing that I've think about last, last night. If you try, try, try to take a look, instructional technology, academic technology, educational technology, and ed tech, what comes first from the word technology? Instruction, ac acad or academics, education, or ed, education. So if you try to take a look, what comes first in planning is the content, not the application. It's not the content, but it's, it's not rather the technology. But what comes first is the content. So in the book, Embracing a Task Before Apps Mindset by Monica Burns, what I like in this book is that she shared that we must always place learning goals at the forefront. 
it's not okay nga uh, baka sinasabi mong nag ano nagbawa na ako ng recorded video okay na yun but if is recorded video applicable in your learning goals like for example if your learning competency is more of performative you will try to insist talaga of making a video which is no longer uh, aligned with the objectives that you do have so that's one thing that we need to think about as teachers so Learning outcomes are statements that tell learners what to expect or know. And as teachers, in designing technology-driven lessons, we need to begin with the learning outcomes. And strong learning outcomes can be measured. Is It is measurable. So for example, a mere watching of video, is it measurable? Of course not. It's not measurable. So we need to go back to the backward learning design of uh, Wiggins and Mactai in accordance with the understanding by design. So we begin with outcomes or the desired results. And after that, you think about what assessment is suitable for this outcome. And jan kapapasok ng experiences. So not technology first. Or may, nalo, may lalaman akong bagong application. Gamitin ko to. Kasi... Uh, Napakaganda. Ginagawa din ng ibang teachers. But if you try to think about it much more deeply, hindi naman pala applicable sa lesson mo. So, we need to be cautious on that, my dear teachers. That you develop still cognitive, the knowledge of the students, the psychomotor, the skills of the students, affective and the attitudes. So, not only the cognitive dapat, not only in the cognitive, but you need to think about also how to develop the psychomotor online and how to develop the affective online. So strong learning outcomes define learning expectations clearly. And we use action verb. We use action verb, meaning most of the time, learning outcomes is performative in accordance with the outcomes-based education of uh, William Spady. That you focus on what students will do, not on what will students know. It's more of still performative. So it defines the required level of performance and very important, it can be measured. That's OBE. Now, allow me to share with you the competency-based instructional framework of Dr. Jesse Barrett, the Dean of the College of Education of the National University. And uh, he designed this framework as also our guide in developing our online learning materials. That the heart of instruction must always be the learning outcomes. And from the learning outcomes, jan papasok yung content, jan papasok yung teaching and learning activities, at jan papasok yung assessment. If you try to take a look the framework much more deeply, it's parang ano lang, it's more of a representation or parang kinontextualize niya lang yung theory ni John Biggs na constructive alignment. Ni Biggs na constructing, constructive alignment. Pero, etong kay Dr. Barrett, linagyan niya na lang ng 21st century learning themes at saka ng 21st century learning skills na dapat yan yung major theme ng ating uh, instruction now. That, of course, if 21st century less of pen and paper already less of lectures already so that's one thing so that you need to think about second thing second point let's now try to apply the universal design for learning principles with technology what is universal design for learning the udl is a trend now in education before it is only being applied in teaching for with special needs but now, universal design of learning is more of applicable not only with those of, with special needs, but for everyone in the approach of inclusive education. So, simply put, kapag sinabi natin universal design for learning, it's all about keeping everyone in mind when designing. So, when we apply that in remote teaching for our learning, uh, dapat kasi it would be a burden for teachers kapag gumagawa sila ng learning modules ngayon. Kasi they need still to cater also yung mga offline. So, so parang minsan, yung problema is nagduplicate yung, nagduplicate yung trabaho ng teachers. 
kasi merong online, may gagawan pang offline. So, you the my suggestion, my advice is this, try to begin with the base, uh, with your basic design. What is your basic design? Yung basic design, yan yung majority ng mga sudyante mo. So, you try to analyze in this section. The majority of my section are online. So, dapat, yung online mo, i-duplicate or i-replicate mo lang yan in your learning modules. So, that's the, you need to think about of the basic design and dapat applicable yung basic design mo or flexible yung basic design mo in all or in other designs. That's why we need to teach every student. But mind you, no, may mga problema along the way minsan. Kasi of course, no, the teachers are also anxious. The teachers are also do have a lot of questions in themselves. And then the students do have also a lot of anxieties. Minsan, nagka-clash si teacher at yung sudyante. Minsan, kapag hindi masasagot ni teacher, excuse me, yung mga sagot ng sudyante, minsan nagkaka-problema. But you need to be cautious also as teachers in attending the needs of the students. Given that our students are woke generation, kasi baka binash ka na sa Facebook. <laughs> baka nag-viral ka na sa Facebook kapag hindi mo masagot yung mga needs ng sudyante mo. So, uh, simply put, simply put, universal design for learning is all about equifinality. Equifinality. That you target, you target all approaches and then all your designs is suitable for all types of learners. For all types of learners. So that's equifinality. So under the Universal Design Learning Framework, instructors should provide course content and resources in several formats. I am now applying ha, the Universal Design for Learning to technology. And you give learners different ways to demonstrate what they've learned. Kasi minsan baka puro lang writing, writing, writing. And then, just ko, nakakasuka na kapag ganito, ganyan. Pero din ang kinakain mo, kapag pareho, uh, pare pareho lang kinakain mo, di ba nakakasuka? And then, of course, multiple strategies to engage learners and motivate participation. Allow me to share with you the three principles quickly. Number one, we need to have multiple means of representation. That you deliver the content in various ways, not only with lecture, not only with videos, for example, you need to represent the content in various ways also. So you need to have multiple formats. That, for example, if this week you are teaching the content through text, you try to have infographics next week. Or you try to make a podcast next week or an audio or a video. Or you can try a combination. So that's why we need to have multiple formats in delivering content. Not only all about text, not only all about graphics. So you need to make it varied also. So uh, for example, this week you are into video or lecture. So there are also classroom options. Like for example, if you want to have lecture capture software that you record your lecture and then you upload it, you can do that. Or also, there are also alternatives. For example, if you have a hard time or if you are in, if you are a camera shy, you can link to recordings by trusted software. Like for example, there are a lot of available lectures in Khan Academy or in Merlot. So you can do that. No, You can browse also Khan Academy and Merlot if you don't want to record yourself or you want, don't want to make a screen share, a screencast rather. Or also, for graphics, you can use infographic tools. Like for example, pick to chart, you can ask the students to make an infographic. Visal.ly, Canva is very popular now. That Canva sometimes would be, uh, that Canva can eradicate your Photoshop now. As well as if uh, yung bata wala talagang software, uh, he or she can use PowerPoint templates as an infographic tool. That there are a lot of PowerPoint templates that is infographic worthy that would be very useful for our students. Advanced organizers is also one. 
it these are resources that you provide in advance and that help students organize information they will learn. Most of my modules, I am starting with module overview. Most of the modules that I am having online, ha? online modules. And in the module overview, that is where I write the objectives or the learning outcomes and then the description, what are the outline of the lesson. And then after that, I am also writing there already the performance task at the end of the module in order for them to be prepared in advance of what they will accomplish for that specific week, for example. Also, the second uh, principle of universal design for learning is that we need to have multiple means of engagement. Multiple means of engagement. The one thing, why do we need to have multiple means of engagement? Because we need to increase student interest. These are the, this is a generation that would want always to give a choice. That they want always to be given a choice. And after that, you make the content more relevant to students' lives. That's why not to abstract content. So these are the students that want to be given a choice. For example, what format do you want? Or for example, in my case, may ginawa kong, sabi ko, uh, be creative. Pag sinabi ng be creative, dami nang nag-chat-chat sa akin. Sir, pwedeng ano? Pwedeng video? Sir, pwedeng audio? So, uh, the, these are the generation that would want or they love to be given a choice. But also, we need to think about or we need to begin our lessons that is relevant to their lives. No? So that's one thing. After that, we need to increase also the student effort. So you can offer external rewards. For example, if your learning management system do have badges, you can use that. As well as you use tools to let students collaborate, that they can collaborate. Because according to research, one thing that the students miss now is their peers. One thing that the students miss now is their peers. As well as provide feedback that helps students see how to improve. Minsan yung feedback na to napakahirap i-achieve kasi kapag madami kang lesson, madami kang sudyante, madami kang section na hinahandol, napakahirap magbigay ng feedback. But one thing that I'm making is that I generalize the feedback. That I'm telling them, oh, oh I saw your activity and uh, it lacks this, that. So they could reflect that Oh, my activity is good, but there are still some lacking things that my teacher wants to. So you need to provide feedback still, even though it's very difficult. Or if you are very creative enough, or parang walo lang man sila sa, sa klase, you can record an audio, and then you can send it to them. So offer different levels of challenge for some activities. So that's one thing. But you need to begin talaga with telling them of what to expect for the subject. Because we need to be, you need, we need to be in order, or we need to be organized in this era of remote teaching and learning. That things are volatile, things are uncertain. That we do have a lot of anxieties. So self-regulation is one. So post an assignments along with a checklist of many goals. So, uh, for example, in my lectures. What I am doing now is that I am always posting the outline. I am always posting the outline. For example, uh, for this session, you will achieve three things. And then, uh, nilalagyan ko talaga ng numbers. Kagaya ng presentation natin ngayon, that we will be having three things. Number one, number two, number three. In order for them to be guided. So, we need to do this because face-to-face uh, -face instruction and Distance learning is completely different. That, for example, they can pop, they can ask you a question along the way, but now they can't do that. So also provide ways for students to assess their own understanding. That's why we have formative assessments in your learning management system. And then ask students to reflect on the course. So there would be time that they would be reflecting. The last principle is the multiple means of expression. So, showing what they know. Also, uh, one thing that I am doing now is that I provide multiple options for essay tests. For example, I will be having an exit slip or a uh, essay test for them. I give them three questions and then I ask them to pick one. So, that's one thing that uh, I am doing now. But of course, the questions are somewhat similar with each other. 
and then allow students to use the essay as a script for a media piece. One thing that I'm doing now, in order for them to communicate with me also, and to practice their speaking skills, is I'm using Flipgrid. And in Flipgrid, they can they will record. And then yung maganda sa Flipgrid is that may allow may, may limit yung number of minutes ng recording nila. For example, one minute lang, one minute and 30 seconds, yun lang yung record nila. So you can do that also. Checking progress. That's why hindi ko winawala talaga yung pre-assessment at yung post-assessment sa module ko. Kasi uh, they are comparing of if they have gained something or not. Kasi visible naman sa kanilang gradebook yung scores nila sa pre-assessment at sa post-assessment. As well as through planning and reflection, you check the progress. Okay? So for strategies, you create prompts. You give questions. And then, encourage students to set goals and deadlines. That's why from the very beginning, I'm telling them already that, that this is the deadline. And the deadlines is not, is not, uh, I, is not na my deadline ko bago-bago every week. Hindi. Uh, like, for example, I changed my deadlines naman this week simply because that they have, they do have a hard time. So sabi ko, I will be giving you too much of deadline now. Like, for example, uh, all my classes, <coughs> excuse me, all of the materials are being published uh, 12 o'clock in the morning of Monday. So, published na yun lahat, meaning it's all visible to them. Pero sabi ko, yung deadline nito will be a day before, a day before of our next synchronous session. So, napakahaba, di ba? <laughs> napakahaba. For example, if yung class ko sa kanila is uh, Tuesday, yung deadline nun is a day before ng next live classes namin, which is Monday, 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, kasi uh, we need to be flexible. Eh. Of course, everyone is adjusting. <laughs> they are also adjusting. We need to adjust also with them. But if too much na talaga, means in, for example, I adjusted already the deadline, and then kapag may deadline, pa, may, meron pa yung bata na hindi makakapagpass, hindi ko na alam kung gagawin ko sa kanya. So also, ask them to reflect as they reach the goal, each goal. That sometimes you need to you need to tell them what is the reason of these deadlines. Because means and baka kulang lang sa explanation. Or means and for example, if a parent will approach you as a teacher or as a leader, and then uh, nagagalit yung parent kaya to ganyan, ahayaan mo magalit, ahayaan mo magsabi. And then after that, if tapos na siya, yun yung pagbigay mo. And then you try to explain. Because means and kulang lang sa explanation. Okay. Number three, last, practical tips na lang and tools that would you will use in your online class. Okay? Uh, what time is it? You will be until 6 o'clock. <laughs> Joke lang. So, I, uh, I hinge this with the cognitive, cognitive load theory of John Sweller. Uh, some of you might be new with the theory of cognitive load. We need to go back to this theory in making our resources. We need to go back in this theory in the making of our resources. Why? We need to minimize extraneous load. Avoid the use of anything that distracts the learners and makes the learning process difficult. Be straight to the point in designing your learning resources. Like for example, in the making of PowerPoint presentation, be, be as simple, be as simple enumerate, use bullets, not na baka lumilipad-lipad yung mga materials mo dyan, and then minsan, hindi na, visib hindi na visible. Meron mga sudyante na nagsabi sa akin last year. Sabi nila, Sir, yung PowerPoint ng teacher namin, last year sabi nila sa akin, pan ang tawag daw, literature. Yung subject nila, literature. Pero yung word, hindi literature, of course. Letter, H sure. Bakit letter H sure? Kasi sir, yung PowerPoint ni teacher namin, daming words mula sa taas, papunta sa baba. Puro words. At binabasa na lang ng teacher. Ano, tutulog kami sir. <laughs> so that's one thing, no? As well as you manage intrinsic load. Uh, it refers to the inherent complexity of the learning material. You cannot do much to reduce this load, but you need to be balanced. So, uh, intrinsic load means that you need to be balanced in terms of what type of material you will be giving to them. As well as maximize their main load. 
it happens when the course is well designed. So meaning, your design last week is this, but you need to be consistent this week the design is the same. Okay? So you need to be consistent. Hindi pa bago-bago. Kasi mahirap. That's why you need to maximize the germane load in terms of the cognitive load theory. So to create and share content, there are many ways to create and share content. Like for example, if you want to lecture capture software, you can use Echo 360 or Panopto. So these are uh, tools that you can use. For example, if you want naman screencast software, you can use screencast Omatic or Jing that automatically you can uh, lecture and then at the same time yung picture mo nandyan and yung PowerPoint presentation mo nandyan. On my case, I'm using Loom kasi uh, I am using uh, Apple, iCloud, and then uh, yung uh, mababa, lang yung, mababa lang yung memory. So, gusto ko lahat is cloud-based para hindi na ako mahihirapan. So, I'm using Loom. Uh, also, if you it is difficult for you to upload or if there are limit because some of the learning management systems do have a limit, you can use the video sharing sites like YouTube or Vimeo. So, sa YouTube, you can make the video unlisted sa settings, unlisted. Kapag sinabi natin unlisted, only those who do have the link can access the YouTube video. So you can do that also. Also, in designing lecture videos, try to think about these principles. What is the purpose of this video? And then, my dear teachers, in terms of length, do not be too much, no? So, kasi kayo din mahihirapan sa pag-upload. Like, for example, 15 minutes or baka, for example, nag-lecture ka dyan, 2 hours. And then, bibigay mo dun sa sudyante. And then, puro ka lang basa ng basa ng PowerPoint. Tingnan natin kung may mag-review pa ng, pa ng lecture mo. So, you limit that into 10 minutes. On my case, I'm using the 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Too much na ng 15 minutes nga eh. As well as access. How can they access it? Is it downloadable or not? As well as sensitivity in terms of language, the content, as well as the technical aspect of the presentation. So, these are the things that you need to think about in designing lecture videos. Also, if you don't want to like to record, if you don't want to record and then you want to curate na lang and then to give the link to the students, you can use Merlot and other content providers like Can Academy that they do have videos already, lecture videos, which are made by experts. So they can you can use that also. So to present content in new ways during a meeting, you think about apps or maps. Uh, one thing that I am using now, uh, from the very beginning, I am also a Nearpod certified educator. I'm using Nearpod. Yung maganda sa Nearpod is that every now and then, I am making a pause, and in the pause, the students will answer a checkup quiz. So, my synchronous session is divided into different pauses. So, I am chunking the content, and in every chunk, I'm checking for understanding. So, walang may matutulog kasi along the way, may pause and then may quiz and then recorded siya. So, that's one thing that I am using. So, you can also use Nearpod. If you want to have trainings on Nearpod, kindly communicate with me. I would be very glad to help you. Also, use concept map software or CMAP to depict relationships between course and concepts. As well as, if you ask the students to create and share content. So, pwede siya gumamit ng Flipgrid. So, Flipgrid, magsasagot siya sa question mo, pero ano na, nang uh, gumagamit, uh, nagbibideo na siya. Gumagamit siya ng selfie video in answering your question. So, screencast to the screener, you want digital storytelling, LMS glossary tools, Wicked tools, bug tools, or Google apps. You can use that also. So, to engage students in small groups, you can use also the breakout room of Zoom if you are into a pro plan of Zoom or a premium plan of Zoom, you can use also the breakout rooms. Nearpod also, because uh, yung Nearpod, parang ano siya, if gumagamit ka ng Mentimeter, gumagamit ka ng gumagamit ka ng Paul Everywhere at ng Bubble Us, nandun na. Parang merong mga Nearpod present, merong mga Nearpod tools para sa lahat. So that's one thing. As well as, in hosting class meetings, you use different video conferencing tools. 
So we have Teams, we have Cisco Wayback, Blackboard Collaborate, Google Meet, and Zoom. But uh, my suggestion is do not jump from one conferencing tool to the other. Kasi baka this week nag-Zoom ka. Next week nag-Google Meet ka naman. Next week nag-Webex ka naman. Next week nag-Teams ka naman. So uh, do not <laughs> confuse your students. Stick only to one video conferencing tool. Kasi it would be very difficult for them in installing every now and then. So be consistent. So if you use conference features in class, encourage dialogue. Try them to ask a question and then to talk to you. It's one way also of encouraging students' contribution as well as you identify areas of agreement and disagreement. That synchronous session is a time also to elicit some suggestions and to ask them questions about your asynchronous activities that is not clear to them. As well as promote understanding between teachers and students. And then one thing also, to provide feedback on your end. So, uh, for example, if you want them to collaborate with one another, you can use Google Docs. As well as Entrepid Time Stream, if you, want, if you are into Araling Panlipunan and you want to make them a timeline, uh, for example, uh, pictures, if you love pictures, taking pictures every now and then, you can use Flickr. So Flickr is one. As well as concept map, if you want to make the students make a mind map, public, you can use that also. But also, the education group of Facebook, it is very beneficial because most of our students are in Facebook. You can use also Facebook as your learning management system. But of course, it's not. it cannot be considered as a learning management system talaga kasi it lacks assessment, for example, and also wiki spaces for small group projects that the students will do. So these are the tips sometimes to kick your bad e-learning design habits. One thing is that don't overdo it. Kasi baka minsan ang dami ng linalagay mo, may pictures, may kung ano-ano na lang. Don't overdo it. Be a simple. That is anchored on the cognitive load theory that we need to be as simple as that to avoid anxiety to our students. As well as stick with sans serif fonts or the default fonts of your, of your, I don't know, if you, if you are, most especially if you don't know how to play with fonts, if you don't know how to play with fonts, make use of the scan path, use repetitive elements, as well as very important, you structure first and you design second. Kasi minsan you design first and then you do not know na nasaan na ba ako or baka ano na, ang gulo na ng presentation na ibinibigay mo. As well as you master color combinations also. Kasi minsan baka hindi na visible, uh, ginagamit mo pa rin. As well as very important, research, research, and research. So there are two ways, no? If launching our lesson, student pace, ito yung asynchronous, yung live natin, that is your synchronous. Pero, may advantages at disadvantages sila. Kapag asynchronous, yung cognitive participation ng bata, mataas. Kasi focused siya sa material. And then, it can increase reflection and ability to process information. So, during live classes naman, sa synchronous, is more of personal participation na. Yun nga sabi ko, most of the time, ginagandahan ko na talaga yung asynchronous ko. Kasi, pagdating ng synchronous, more on personal touch na ako. Nangangamusta na lang. Ako, kamusta ka? Or, oh, can you talk something about this one? Or, I am flashing a video which is connected with my asynchronous class and then we will be talking about that na lang. So, one thing that you will be using. So, uh, teaching tips sa live class ninyo. Provide useful or unique material. Hindi na kung ano yung nasa asynchronous, ganun pa rin. So, do not replicate. Uh, replicate. But, do find ways to make connection with your synchro, uh, asynchronous to synchronous as well as determine your video conferencing tool and give the link ahead of the time and as well as open the video conferencing tool ahead of the time and then tell what to expect in your class. You tell them, okay, this would be our activity for this class, for this synchronous session. And then send discussion questions in advance so that they are ready during your class. So also, you find a quiet workspace kasi baka ang gulo din, no? There are also 
there is also a concept of external destruction kasi eh, kasi baka sa likod mo may mga guma, may gumagawa diyan and then nagbibigay ka ng klase and then natatanaw ng mga bata and also ask the students to do the same and also record your lessons and share with students most especially sa mga mahina yung internet connection mirror what you say and what they see kasi minsan mabagal yung internet connection mo putol-putol pala yung kinalalabasan doon sa end ng bata as well as you use an external microphone if uh, if you want to maximize the best audio connection sa asynchronous naman you add personalized audio or to make it personal let the students feel that ikaw yung talaga yung gumawa ng module and then provide students choice with assignments and be creative to keep it interesting and very important be flexible with deadlines but of course if god is a god of mercy god is also a god of justice <laughs> you need to teach also our students to be conscious with the deadlines and then it's okay to keep the learning old school sometimes like for example you ask them to make a mind map pero offline sa gagawin nila sa ban paper and then kukuna ng, lang, ng picture and then to upload that in the LMS. So, for example, if you are fond of asking the students to watch a video and then gusto mo na pinapanood talaga nila, you can use Edpuzzle. For example, may kinuha kang YouTube video, ilagay mo sa Edpuzzle and then may annotation siya. Meaning, may mga posts siya and then the students will answer a question during that post. For example, if you are into naman documents, articles, uh, legal basis, and then you want the students to read talaga, kasi minsan hindi nila binabasa eh, kapag walang questions or walang activities, so you can use also perusal for text annotation. Pero Edpuzzle and perusal, si Nearpod meron yan. May, meron talaga si Nearpod ng ganitong mga pictures. So, uh, before I end my discussion, my sharing this afternoon with you, what will the students do? That would be the question. This is very important question. Not just si ring light ninyo. <laughs> Kasi minsan, aligaga yung mga teachers. Bibili ako ng ring light. Bibili ako ng mga audio mixer. Pero, they forget what is very important. Instruction, modeling, discussions, research and exploration, online tests and podcasts, quizzes and tests, reflection and metacognition, collaborative group work, practice and review. Not only the ring light, not only you being presentable, it's also important. But uh, we are educators, you focus on the different types of learning. Nakuha, my dear teachers. So try this. Try this. Mini lectures ending with small group work activities, 30 to 40 minutes. Collaborative documents, Google. If you want video responses, you flip grid. If you want interactive surveys, you Mentimeter. Feed, feed forward, judging based on what else can be done. So provide a variety of sources and options to get input and produce output. We give them a lot of resources to read. Low tech or asynchronous activities is very important given that the internet connection in the Philippines is unstable as well as you can into debates, discussion forums, social media postings, and photo voice is also one thing. So we need to leverage ourselves. Instead of long lectures, worksheets, feedback, high-stake tests, one-size-fits-all, 100% synchronous, don't do that, ha? 100% synchronous, dominant curricula, individual activities, focus on pedagogy over technology, higher-order thinking skills and lower-order thinking skills, soft and interpersonal skills, skills that is very important in the 21st century, and essential content. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you've learned something from me this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you also, Philippine Institute for 20 Okay, thank you, Sir Paul. You are not do uh, done yet with you, Sir Paul. Yes. We will proceed now with the open forum, okay? Again, our session for this afternoon is only allocated for two hours. We will cater as many questions as possible depending on the availability of our time. We will select questions raised by our participants here in Zoom and also in Facebook. And to those who will be tapped to ask questions, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you are affiliated with, and your question. Okay? 
So while waiting for the questions to appear, I would like to ask Sir Paul. Sir Paul, are you with me? Yes, 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 yes. Us? Okay, sir, can you tell us about the mode of... Uh, nag nagbukas na ba yung school year sa inyo? In the school yes, where yes. you're affiliated with? Can you tell us about the main mode of uh, like instruction or delivery that you're implementing in your own university or school? Are you into blended like combination of online and then modular? Or... Combination of blend virtual. We are a combination of online and offline learning. Of course, no, because we need to be inclusive to those students who don't have. Because we have students na talaga in a far flung barrio, and then uh, the signal is very challenging. So we need to cater that. But uh, one thing that we need to do also is try to give the students an education in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of online. Uh, teaching and as well as of offline teaching. Because if puro offline, it would be very difficult for us teachers in terms of reproduction. So that's one thing that we need to think about. Also. Okay? Okay, sir. So, sir, with the delivery of the virtual or online instruction, what so far is the most difficult in terms of the implementation? Based on your Internet own experience. Connection. Of course. <laughs> Internet okay. connection at the end of the students. It's challenging. And then another thing, that, uh, of course, no, if you are handling uh, specialization courses or professional education courses, there are a lot of things that you need to discuss. So uh, you do, of course, from the very beginning, you do have a hard time to like that. forgetting face-to-face -face instruction and distance learning. So that's one question. Uh, that's one thing that is very challenging also. How to maximize the time? How to maximize how to cover everything for the So that's one of the challenges uh, for me. Okay, thank you, sir. Again, we are encouraging our participants to raise questions, especially to our participants also in Facebook. We are encouraging you also to raise a question to Sir, Ma to Sir Paul Ray Mark Salsad. Okay? Sir, you gave us a while ago, while waiting for other participants' questions to appear, a while ago you provided us different video conferencing apps like Google Meet and Zoom. Like if I have to share with you, for example, my own experience, I am into the using of Google Meet and Zoom. If I am to choose, I prefer, I prefer Zoom. But then again, generally, medyo mabigat at medyo magastos yung Zoom para sa mga bata. In the case of Google Meet naman, like if I am depicting, for example, my own presentation, I notice na kapag naka-full screen siya, di ko nakikita yung mga estudyante ko. So it's somewhat difficult for me to do interaction from time to time, especially if I am doing uh, my presentation na naka-full screen. What do you think, sir? Can you recommend one video conferencing app which is cheaper and at the same time student friendly, especially in terms with of bandwidth, cost. In terms of bandwidth requirement, Zoom is much more lower, I think. It's much more bandwidth requirement. But there are a lot of limitations with Zoom if you are not a premium user. So that's with Zoom. But there are a lot of features that Zoom can offer in terms of education the breakout rooms, the discussion, and the reactions button. On the other hand, you need you need to be, ano talaga, si Google Meet is also good. No? For example, if you uh, if you do have G Suite account, you can do it si Google Meet. Kasi si Google Meet, for example, if you will record automatically, it will be transferred to, to your uh, Google Drive. And then you can provide the link lang to the students. And then you can provide just the link to the students and then they can watch it on their own. As well as, in terms of student engagement, my trick yan, actually. My trick yan na paano makita yung estudyante and at the same time, nag-share screen ka. So that's one thing na hindi na alam. Na, kasi okay. that's one of the topics talaga ng Google Meet. And most of the teachers will not use that. Kasi sabi nila, hindi uh, uh, ka mag-Google Meet kasi kapag mag-share screen na kami, hindi na naman makikita yung estudyante namin. Baka kung ano-ano na yung ginagawa nila. So, my teachers, my colleagues, most of them are using Google Meet because of that trick. You, just, you need to install some extensions in Chrome so that you can maximize the usage of Google Meet. So, okay, thank you, Sir Paul. 
We have one participant who would like to ask a question live here in Zoom. We have Ma'am Ermi Lux El Matildo. Okay, can we have Ma'am Ermi Lux El Matildo? Uh, uh, hello, hey, good, afternoon. good afternoon, sir. Paul. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, uh, it's my ano, voice. <laughs> Joe? Yung audio, claro po ba? Yes, uh, yes ma'am, we can hear you. Opo. Uh, is my voice, I mean, audio clear? Okay, yes ma'am, yes. we can hear you. Can you uh, yes, uh, talk to us uh, about the school where you came from? Yes, I have my question for you. Yung sa, yung sa, uh, yes, I am Ermila uh, El Mateldo from Surigal Sur, uh, Surigao Sur State University. Um, I'll be asking po yung sa intended learning outcome. Uh, uh, okay. I understand na uh, outcomes-based education na po tayo, bali competency-based. So yung sa practice po niyo, Sir Paul, yung sa in the drafting of the ILO, ano po ba yung nire-reflect niyo? Is it only the higher order thinking skill, yung demonstrative skill lang ba or included pa ba yung mga yung iba, yung affective at cognitive na skill? Kasi what I have learned in some webinars, ang in-encourage ay yung uh, i-reflect lang yung mga yung style o yung mga higher order thinking skill na demonstrative skill or competency. So, ang tanong ko lang kung yung sa ILO po ninyo na pinapractice ay ini-include pa ba ninyo yung mga ibang skills, I mean yung competency such as yung mga effective at saka cognitive? Good question. Good question. Uh, it will be, I will answer first, uh, first in theory. No? Theoretically, you need to uh, enter the ruler. You need to be with the lower order thinking skills from concrete to the abstract, which is from lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills. Number two, practically, a uh, practical answer. You need still to deliver both, or uh, because you cannot demonstrate without the knowledge, right? You cannot demonstrate. You cannot perform something. You do not have a knowledge. Only that, doon ka magbababa or doon ka maglo-lower down sa bulk ng content. Doon ka magtitrim down sa bulk ng content. So, and also, the feasibility also of the ILO. If it is in the distance learning or if it is feasible also in an hour, paano ko siya uh, paano ko siya ilalagay sa That's one thing that you need to bear in mind. As well as, if professionalized courses, merong mga prototypes sila ba naman ngayon, you can follow those things also. Uh, for professional education courses, for example, merong mga prototypes sila ba yun? Mga uh, teacher, uh, Research Center for Teachers. So that's one thing na pa, ano gagawin din. Pero two things. Number one, dapat syempre, we cannot reach higher order thinking without laying the foundation. Number two, if you do have a problem of covering it, if you do have a problem of covering it, you lower down in terms of content. And then you focus more on the performance. But we cannot live without the basic knowledge. That's my Okay, thank you, Ma'am Ermi Lux El Matildo from Surigao. Okay, Surigao all the way from Mindanao. Thank you, Ma'am. Okay. So, obviously, sir, we're prepared to speak about struggles of those who are teaching in state universities and private schools or private universities. Medyo nagbabari, hindi ba? Ang, come again, sir, come again, come again. If we are to speak about struggles or difficulties, especially of those who are teaching on state universities or colleges, comparing to that of those who are teaching in private universities, medyo nagbabari yung struggles. Okay? In our case, for example, like in our case, for example, in, in a state university, we are in a modular setup. 
the the kind of problem that I am looking forward is yung bulk ng na mga modules na mga bata in the future. For example, I am expected to provide them 14 days to work on a single unit and then there comes yung bulk ng mga trabaho, medyo marami. Oh yes. On the Actually, integration uh, on the integration of technology, what do you think sir? How, how how are we expected to go through with that especially that we are adopting a modular setup? Like because it's context specific, eh? we need uh, new normal is context specific. My context would not be applicable to you, or it might be applicable to others. Uh, in terms of the bulk of the module, in terms of the bulk of the module, one thing that some of the colleges and universities are doing is that they do carousel approach. That's one thing that they are doing. They're doing carousel approach. For example, this uh, group of subjects would be offered in the first, uh, for example, how many weeks, and after that, that's Next, uh, naman na mga weeks is that this subject, so they are using that the carousel of course, in order for the subject or for the modules not to be given fully for the students. Uh, yan yung carousel approach. For example, if the students are having ten subjects, we so divide the semester. The first part ng semester is the first five subjects lang muna, and then after that, in the remaining semester, yung last five subjects ay yung kukuni ng bata. Meron meron ng sub meron ng university na ano talaga eh na parang three parts talaga yung kanila carousel so the first phase second phase and third phase of subjects so that ano talaga it would not be very difficult for the students ang delivery ng learning modules and then also in terms of using of learning management system in terms of using technology tools we need to think about uh, low bandwidth tools for the students. Like for example, Google Docs is a low bandwidth. For example, the moment na nag-appear na dyan, uh, it's uh, low bandwidth na sa mga bata. So, we need to take a look also of the bandwidth requirement of our tools that we are using. Okay? Okay, thank you, Sir Paul. We have a Facebook question from Sir Domrick Pananshar. I think he's thinking of using Google Meet in his instruction. Sir, what is the maximum number of participants in Google Meet? Do you have any idea, sir? For uh, if you are a G Suite, no. If you are a G, uh, if you do have a G Suite account or a license account for Google Education, the maximum is 250. I think for non G Suite, I think it's 100 to 150. The maximum is 250 participants for Google Meet. Okay, thank you, Sir Paul. We are still waiting for other questions to appear. Ma'am Anessa Mangindra is raising her hand. Ma'am, can you uh, give us your question to Sir Paul Ray Marks as well? I will unmute you for a while, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> So, Jean, can you please unmute Ma'am Anessa Mangindra for a while? Good afternoon, okay. sir. Good Hi, ma'am. Good, ma good afternoon. Marinig niyo ako, sir? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Opo. Um, ako po si Anessa Mangindra from Sultan Kudarat State University. Sa October 5 pa po ang klase namin, sir. Bali, katatapos lang po ng survey namin sa preferred learning modality ng mga bata. So my question po yung, kasi dalawa po yung pinagpilian nila, uh, MDL, yung modular distance learning at saka online learning po. So may tanong po yung mga students sa amin as yung, sa mga department chair kung pwede ba raw dalawa ang pilihan nila. Kasi naalala po yung sabi ni Sir kanina, is take to one ba yung sinabi ni Sir kanina, Sir? Na dapat isa lang ang pipiliin ng estudyante? Are you in a private school, ma'am? Uh, State University po. Ah, State University. Opo. Uh, for example, uh, try to give a situation. For example, if you are using a learning management system, and then sa learning management system, may grade book doon. May mga activities doon. So if you are using a learning management system, and then the activities are there, and then my grade book there, mahirap sa part ng teacher. Kasi baka nag-answer siya sa LMS, answer din siya sa uh, modular, so, in your recording, hindi mo na alam, saan ka ba nag-answer? Sa LMS ba? Or sa module? So, dapat, we need to stick to one modality lang. Kasi, 
for practical purposes, it would be very difficult for you on your end as teachers. Kasi hindi mo alam kung saan ba talaga nagsagot yung bata. Minsan ang switching din ng sudyante, we need to give deadlines for that. Kasi minsan yung mga sudyante na nagsiswitch sila, for example, first week online, next week modular. And then pagka next week naman mag-online, ay napakahirap kapag ganyan. So they need to be given a choice talaga. If they have the capacity for online, go online. If wala talaga, of course, you go to modular. We need okay, to po. have Salam. one only. Pero you need to be flexible in terms of giving of materials. Kasi that online would be divided into three pa. Yung online students nyo, may three division pa yan. Those who have strong internet connection, you have the high internet connection, medium, and the low internet connection. Yung high, may fiber optic internet. Yung medium, yung mga may DSL or home Wi-Fi. You're, yung low, yan yung mobile data. So therefore, kahit online yan, may divided parang tatlo. So napaka-challenging yan on that part. Kasi you need to provide low bandwidth uh, activities with them. So dapat, ano na, tulutuol na lang talaga. So if uh, most of your students uh, have low bandwidth and then uh, ang high bandwidth naman is uh, mga konti lang naman, so you go to low bandwidth. Meaning, uh, mag-record videos na lang ako, hindi na ako mag-live classes. Or for example, twice a month na lang ako mag-live classes for feedbacking. So that's one thing that you can consider. Thank you for that question. Opo, okay. Maraming salamat din, sir. Thank you po. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Anissa Mangindra. Ma'am Anissa is all the way from Sultan Kudarat. We have one participant who is raising his hand. I guess we have Sir Michael Diaz. Sir, would you like to ask a question? You're recognized, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Michael Diaz of Southern Lady State University. Um, I just wanted to open this one. Um, what is your stance, sir, for the students who are, I mean, yes, in our, in our um, situations here, we, pro we prepare a module for our students, for those students who has no internet connection. But there are students also who has an internet connection, but they are preferred to have a module. That's why, uh, um, and, and for those students also has no internet connection, so we are going to provide them a module. And for those students who has an internet, we are going to have a an online class for them. And what's your stance of the students that they are preferred to have a module, and because they are not willing to attend for online class, sir? <laughs> okay, I have also I, we have also one like that. Na, uh, they prefer modular, not because they don't have internet connection. They prefer modular, not because of the internet connection. But they, they prefer modular simply because that they want to go to work, that they, they do have employment. But from the very beginning, is that as teachers, no, is that we can force them actually, of course, no. Because kapag we will force them, na may internet connection ka naman, but ano ka? But ayaw mong mag-online. Kasi ibang story naman yun. Even that they are woke generation, they can easily run in Facebook. Like, like, Nagka-problema na tayo kapag ganyan. But uh, in this era, I don't understand if that is the case. But try still to insist. Try to try your convincing powers. Convincing powers. Pero on that end na ano, Parang it's on your own at the level of their choice. Parang for me, it's a dead end. That is the case. Kasi meron kami talaga. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For me kasi it's quite insulting kasi um, they are um, online on, 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 on chatting, on FB, but in the class, they are not, you know, ano, they are just to na modular. Oh yes, oh, oh. kasi <laughs> may pang load nga ng ML dito. <laughs> diba? But, uh, that, What's the thing? Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you po. Okay, again, thank you Sir Michael Diaz. Came all the way from Southern Leyte. Thank you Sir Paul. 
Sir, I am I am looking at it as a possible problem in the future, especially with the use of social media. No, that the fact that we are conducting classes online or using virtual na pamamaraan, I am looking at the possibility na yung klase mo will be uploaded or downloaded or ma-upload dun sa social media and then there's a possibility na yung mga pinagsasabi mo dun it's more likely na maging subject for memes or katatawanan or you will be corrected. How are we going to protect ourselves especially on a possibility on a danger like a that? Policy. We need to have a policy about that. For example, in my school, uh, I contributed the policy on that. But ano talaga? No recording, no posting of a picture or of uh, converting a picture of the teacher and converting it to a meme. We need to orient from the very beginning. What are the do's and don'ts in having online classes? Just kahit na kahit na puto lang yung internet connection mo. For example, yung internet connection mo naglag and then uh, ang palaki ng baba mo dyan or ang uh, lumalaki yung mata mo dyan and then naputol and then sila hindi naputol yung internet connection so kita ka ipiksuran yan or is the screenshot and then they will be posting that but you need to ano you need to protect yourselves about that in terms of the data privacy also of the school so dapat you need to have a policy on that that you can give them appropriate sanctions the moment that we found guilt in the Okay, thank you, Sir Paul. We will have Ma'am Ermi Lox. Ma'am, would you like to add up something? Ah, yes, Ma'am. I'll, I'll just like... Hey. Hey. Uh, hello. Okay na po? Yes. Okay na po yung audio? Yes, yes, um, yes. I would like... Uh, yes, I would like to share po kasi uh, ganda yung struggle namin tapos yung may ibang mga a schools pa na hindi pa nakapag-implement, no? So, yung ginawa po namin is, um, although nga, nag kami as to the preference of the students, kung ano yung gusto nila, printed ba or online, pero yung strategy po namin uh, sa Surigal Source State University, lalo na sa college namin sa business and management, is we started online. Um, uh, we, like, we post as uh, the class list of the students and then we posted the links of uh, the Google Classroom or the FB group for them to join immediately. So through that, uh, that's our, that was our basis na kaya nila, kaya nila na makapag online. So through that um, strategy, uh, malalaman mo na sino lang sa kanila ang hindi makapag online. So we, through that data, we analyzed na ilan lang talaga yung yung sa printed module kasi yung printed module is costly kaysa yung kaysa yung strategy mo na i-ask mo sila kung anong preference nila kasi may mga students talaga kahit kaya nila mag mag online is pipili sila ng printed so maybe it's best na you start um, implementing online then kung kasi malalaman mo diyan na kaya nila they're capacitated to do the online class by doing it first, uh, implementing the online. So, uh, through that, mal malalaman mo kung sino sa kanilang pwede sa Google Classroom, pwede sa FB Group, yung sa Messenger. Yung hindi talaga makasali, justify the reason why saka sila na yung makapag-access uh, ng printed module. Yun lang ang share ko po. Okay, thank you, Mama Tilda, for sharing your insights about uh, the practices you have in your own university. Okay? Sir Paul, can we have your concluding words? Uh, continue to learn, my dear teachers. I know that it would be a long way pa for all of us. There are a lot of things to be polished. There are a lot of things pa to repurpose and to redesign. But one thing is that we need to have growth mindset because having fixed mindset it would lead you to frustration if you do not abide with the times of the time. So we need to be growth mindset teachers. Because if we try to insist on things that we can do now, it would lead you to frustration. It would be very stressful on your end. Thank you very much, teachers, for this afternoon and to the Pi 21. Thank you. 
Okay, and that ends your question and answer portion. We will try to reply to some of your queries raised after the end of this session. Before we finally close our conference, let me read to you some announcements. To earn a certificate of participation, you must sign up the evaluation or attendance form that are posted in Zoom, in our Facebook page, and at our YouTube channel, Infomi. The certificate of participation and the PDF copy of Mr. Salzag's presentation will be sent to your respective email right after this event upon verification of your own attendance. Paid participants who didn't receive their certificate of participation within a day, please email to centuryeducators1920 at gmail.com or centuryeducator21gmail.com. To our participants who applied for membership, the amount of 180 pesos will be added for LBC delivery in case the applicant wishes to get the original documents. Membership for at least three organizations is free of LBC delivery charge, and we will follow the mailing address stated in your registration form, or you can email us your preferred mailing address. To those who failed to make it live can still have the chance to get their certificate by watching the recorded video of the conference on YouTube and Facebook. Just sign up the evaluation or attendance form as a requirement. Before closing our session, I would like to grab this opportunity to thank my fellow members and officers of PICE I-21. This webinar will not be possible without the organizers or coordinators. We have the ever dynamic national president of PISME, Mr. John Michael Sonsa, our virtual conference director, Mr. Ricky A. Kibinko, and the ever active president of PAIS I-21, Ms. Emmy John Indonila. We also have our partner teachers and coordinators. We have our advisor who is present live in Facebook, Dr. Nora Ligaspi, Dr. Cyril De La Puente, Mr. Isidro Villa, Mr. Donald or Adam Donald Junio, Mr. Raymond Casho, Mr. Charles Isulan, Mr. Chito Tominez, Mr. Sergin Monticado, Mr. Charles Isulan, Mr. Carl Julia, Mr. Jerry Hubacon. All is here in Ilo, Ilo Science and Technology University and all the active members of our organization, thank you for your continual support. Congratulations also to Mr. Paul, Ray, Mark, and Salzag for making this virtual conference a successful one. Most importantly, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all of you participants for making this event possible and successful. See you on the next gathering sponsored by our organization. We have more webinars for the month of September. We have two more and one for the month of October. On September 18, 9.30 in the morning, we will have Sir Judato Noel Obregon. Sir Obregon is a faculty member of George Mason University, Fairfax, Virginia, in the United States of America, on a topic of learning math virtually using various tools. Okay. Next, we, on September 25, 5.30 in the afternoon, we will have Mr. Prakash Chandra Giri. He's a principal of Goodwill Activity School in Lakeside, Pokhara, Nepal, on a topic retooling the professional development of learning facilitators towards a better new normal. And on October 9, 2030, uh, 2020, Three in the afternoon, we will have engineer Joel B. Garcere, Garcera. He is a master in IT management, a computer engineer, and a professor from Western Institute of Technology on a topic, teaching blended learning effectively using LMS. Again, kindly check at our official social media page and channel for details. We have another promo. Again, you can get unlimited certificate sponsored by PIES I-21, you just have to attend at least five events or five events of PIES I-21 from July 17 to July 31, August 19, September 4, and September 11. You can get our sixth, seventh, and eighth webinar for free. Again, stay safe, everyone. God bless and congratulations. Thank you and see you on our next virtual gathering. <laughs>